good uh, good to go. So here we go. Let's go ahead and get things started in a three, two, one, and we are off. So welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the EU Nordic East EU Challenger Series 2016 Summer Open Qualifiers. My name is Reed Rapid Melton. I hope you guys have been enjoying the coverage of tonight's games. I know I certainly have, so I'm certainly uh, hoping that you guys are experiencing a wonderful experience. I know I have been, and do want to thank everybody for coming out, tuning in to watch Fraternitas. Uh, they are they are a Czech a Czech Republic team. Yeah, okay, team from the Czech Republic. Uh, you guys might know uh, you know Czech players like Freeze, probably one of the most famous players to come from uh, the Czech Republic. Well, this is Fraternitas, and they are an all Czech team playing off against Team Forge. Now, Team Forge doesn't necessarily have a nationality. They are playing this qualifier with two Finnish players. Players, two Korean players and an Italian mid laner. So, um, as was pointed out by Chonoki in chat, we've got a South Korean top laner named Mimic uh, and a South Korean AD carry named Gap. Now, both Gap and Mimic are from Korea. They're from Chunam Techno University or Technical University. It's one of the best uh, schools in Korea, and they have a really strong esports program there. And as part of that esports program, uh, they uh, try to find teams for their players around the world and that's kind of what's happened here with Mimic and Gap. Now this team actually has a lot uh, a lot more international diversity because it's jungler and support are also foreign players. They're Finnish players now known as Taiki and uh, Hiva. Now if you've never heard of Taiki and Hiva before you probably haven't followed the um, challenger scene for uh, for quite a while because Taiki and Hiva they've actually been around for a little bit of time and they're actually pretty good. So for Taiki he actually used to play on low priority the team that we actually just cast and previously he was on three sup um, a team that uh, didn't quite make it through the EU challenger series qualifiers last time he was a guy that you guys might have seen uh, on a little bit of international experiences I believe he played on gambit uh, for a while, if I'm not mistaken, and then I think he also was on Renegades Banditos uh, before joining Team Forge, so he's actually uh, a player that you've probably seen out there in and around. Um, and the, uh, the Finnish players are actually a little bit of a new addition to Team Forge. Originally, it was two Koreans and three Italian players. Uh, they had a support named Lazuriel and a jungler named uh, Soma, Soma Joyo? I, I can't pronounce Italian very well, so that's my best guess at it. Uh, but then they were subbed out for these two Finnish players. Both of them have a lot of competitive success um, over the course of their careers in Europe. And now they're here in EU Nordic East. Uh, I believe they're practicing in Romania, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but this team is no joke. Like, they've put a lot of preparation, a lot of work into Team Forge. And uh, here's basically what they have uh, what they've provided. They have a team house, a training room, and Italian staff to handle and follow, like, business and technical requirements. They've got staff available 24-7. They have a Korean coach with a daily coaching schedule. Um, they've got Korean players from Chunam Technical University. Uh, and like I said, they've got big bedrooms, meals, contracts after the trial period, which is essentially qualifying here for EUCS. And it's it's uh, looks like a pretty great organization. Uh, from what I've heard from the players, it's been super great. And so I'm just looking forward to watching, uh, finally watching them get a chance to play because I haven't actually seen seen them um, play too much. Uh, I think I've watched one of their solo queue games, but that's about it. So we're supposed to be looking for some uh, excellent performances from Gap and Mimic, and I'm actually kind of interested to see uh, exactly the degree to which they can, you know, leverage uh, their uh, their advantages. So let me go ahead and organize the uh, champions just to make sure everybody's in the right spot. Mimic versus Ostronovac. Uh, in the bottom lane, Mimic, I think, actually probably winning that. Uh, he did go for the Doran's Ring Maokai build, not the Corrupting Potion one. And uh, so that should be... Um should offer him maybe a little bit less sustain, but a little bit more trading power. And you could see how he sort of baited Austronovac in and then out-traded him when he turned it around with the healing from Sap Magic. So in the top lane, Gap is doing a great job at hitting these piercing lights through the minion line onto God himself. Gets the stun, but turns out the stun doesn't do anything. So, oh well. Moving, uh, moving on. Uh, jungler, hero class. 
That is Siva, and he's coming in to do some good work there. You can see, or Taiki rather. Taiki coming in, gets uh, the first blood, or helps his team get the first blood, gives it over to Mimic, and hey, there you go. Prowling through the grass, but here we go in the mid lane. Jaiki, or Yaiki, as it is pronounced in Czech, uh, or in the Czech language. I don't speak Czechoslovakian, or uh, uh, Czech, Czech, I don't know what, what do you call the, the, the language that people speak in the Czech Republic? I... I'm sorry, my geography was pretty bad as a kid, and I'm also bad at speaking foreign languages, so that's not going to help, because I'll be speaking a lot of foreign languages here in a little bit, but wow. Alright, let's let's uh, let's go back into things that I do know, and that's talking about League of Legends. Uh, we've got a pretty strong performance in the solo lanes, and then top lane uh, as well. I'm being told that it's just, just Czech, the language, so checkmate. Haha, <laughs> best joke and most original simultaneously. Uh, so here we go. The uh, The biggest thing to watch here in the, in this game is probably going to be the jungle pressure uh, from Taiki. He's always been known as a very aggressive jungler, and so I'm really looking forward to seeing how, uh, how much pressure he can put on the map on one of the most uh, aggressive junglers out there. I know uh, champions like Kindred are also really aggressive, so you see Aiki, he is actually uh, running Kindred, so interesting. To, uh, to see that. Dashing forward, here comes the sun, forcing a flash out of God himself. Never thought I'd say that sentence, but there you go. And so for the time being, things are pretty even. If you look at the CS, you can see a slight CS gap. Whoops, I was meaning to zoom in on gap when I said a CS gap, but we're not going to do that because it keeps... Uh, Moving the camera back away. Either way. A little bit of a combo in there from Denik, but the stun will land, and here comes Heva, or Taiki rather. I'm gonna get them mixed up because of their double letters, but uh, got two K's in Taiki, two I's in Heva, and uh, I guess they were both up there. But either way, bottom lane, we've got Mimic versus Ostronovac. She's gonna get that shield, but holy cow, this guy just takes so much damage. Mimic putting it down in the bottom lane and really sort of owning that up in a lane matchup that should be kind of decent for Echo, but the sustained advantage definitely there for Maokai. Zwar actually thinking about maybe roaming out of the bottom lane for Fraternitas, but uh, not gonna go for that just yet. Staying mid versus Hitsuke. A lot of damage being done there, holy cow. Hitsuke almost just going down there for free, but manages to stay alive. Excuse me, just barely. He's actually still staying in there. He does have that health potion, another one in the inventory, but he's actually just going to save it, head back to base. He could push out another wave, but I think the most important thing is just making sure that you have your hex core upgrades, getting some cooldown reduction early on, maybe to use them more often to push the wave, and uh, see Negatron Cloak is actually the buy there for Hitsuke. I'm just going to call him Jizuke, because uh, I believe the uh, original name for the uh, the player was actually Jizuke, even though he's renamed himself here to Hitsuks. Hitsuks. So Jizuke is the mid laner, and then Hiva and Taiki uh, as well. Another trip to the top lane here for a hero class, who I'm actually going to call by his correct name, Taiki, but with a teleport coming up here as well, we're looking for a dive, trying to cut them off before they come in. The teleport joining them, I think Mimic might be looking for a dive there. Who is he going to go on to? Ostrolovac, she's actually in a really good spot. There's a twisted advance, Asteric stun coming in as well. A nice ult there from Ostrolovac, actually does save his life. He's going to force Taiki actually to uh, flash on out of there. So I'm not sure if that was necessarily a successful dive. They forced the ultimate and the flash and the teleport out of Echo. So maybe he's had a little bit of pressure put on him, but the dive unsuccessful. And Taiki actually almost died, so kind of a struggle there.
Keeping an eye on Gap, who has uh, widened that CS gap between him and his lane opponent. Now a 23 CS lead. Pretty pretty solid. And he's also putting on pressure, even though he's in a 2v1. Uh, still holding that lane pretty well. Mid lane there, some pressure being put on by Yaiki. He's going to get scouted out by a ward over the wall from Jizuke. Gonna just go over and clear it, so nothing too, too crazy. Ostronovash, he's actually just gonna clear out this pink ward down here. Pinged out, of course, by Mimic. And you'll actually notice a lot of pings, because that is one of the primary ways that, uh, you know, Mimic and uh, and Gap communicate, uh, you know, strategies to uh, their opponents. It's, it's pretty much the universal language. Uh. Just ping yourself. I remember before pings, the the dynamic ping wheels actually in the game. Uh, it was actually uh, really difficult just to ping, and you didn't know what your team meant. But now you do. Oh man, Zwar almost finding a catch there on to Jizuke. It's having a little bit of struggles here in this mid lane matchup, but every other matchup is actually going pretty well uh, for Forge. Uh, bottom lane especially, Mimic's actually been really impressive. He is gonna get some help coming in here from Taiki, knocking him back away there. Uh, Ultimate is available, and so Echo will just use that to get out alive, and uh, yeah, pushing himself pretty much back to turn. Whoa, the flash out immediately! Jizuke with those crazy reaction times. Ah, that's actually pretty impressive. Uh, gotta give some credit there. Trying to dodge that out, and actually, wow, winds up trading out pretty evenly. Zwar pushed back away, has that mirror image just popped. Jizuke actually uh, having a little bit of an interesting time. While we were watching all that mid lane action, we are actually going to see a little bit of a bait in here. Uh, it's going to be Taiki versus Yaiki. That rhymes a little bit too much there. Who's going to be able to come out on top? Looks like Taiki actually having a little bit of trouble. There's the flash in Yaiki. Putting for a turn to toss on the board with a kill. On to Taiki. Yaiki and Taiki. Do my best, man. I'm just trying to pronounce names I've never said before. But yeah, really uh, good performance there by uh, by Jizuke in the mid lane, the Italian mid laner. He uh, had great reflexes on top of that. He's still flashing away defensively though, so he's not like putting on offensive pressure and trying to you know make these aggressive plays. Uh, Yaiki's farming between the turrets. I guess that's okay, just trying to soak up some extra XP and push this wave into turret a little bit more. These games were played earlier today, uh, but because they were all broadcast at the same time, I want to broadcast as many games as I can for you guys. So these are being broadcast as VODs. If you know the results, please don't spoil them. I don't know the results. I just close my eyes, click on it, and open it. So we'll see who wins. And while Team Forge may come in as the favorites, just due to a lot of uh, support behind them uh, from both the Italian community, Korean community, Finnish community, um, and of course all of their uh, you know investors. They've got a team house, coaches, Multiple language speakers, translators, all kinds of good stuff. So uh, it's nice to see so much support behind such a new team. And they made it all the way to the finals here of EU Nordic East without actually... Oh man, the spear does land! And Yaiki is forced to ult there. Uh, he does make it out of that ult alive. Here comes Hero Class Taiki in a pretty good spot to throw out some spears. I'm surprised he didn't position more aggressively and just go for the kill there. Uh, on to Kindred, but instead lets him get out alive, forces out that Kindred ult. It's gonna make her a little bit more vulnerable. Holy cow, I can't believe that spear landed. Now God himself chucked down to half HP. He's gonna have to ditch this turret. That's gonna be the first turret to kill of the game to Team Forge. I love that their name is Team Forge and their tag is 4G because it's like 4G. I guess that's how you'd say it in Italian, right? I have no idea, so please no flame. Mimic walks into the stun voluntarily and winds up getting out traded pretty heavily, so I'm not, not super sure about how well that went down. You can see both uh, solo laners taking the exact same itemization with the exception of the Corrupting Potion and Dark Seal. Everything else is the same. Early Swiftest Boots built by Mimic. And I really like that. I've seen a lot more mid laners uh, or top laners do that. Because when they teleport in, they need to have the mobility to get in and start that working out. So Mimic pushing this wave out. Uh, but does have to worry about Ostronovac. He is uh, pretty high damage uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, 
fighting against tanks because you have uh, percent health magic damage. It's pretty good. So let's take a look at how the team is performing. A 32 advantage, uh, CS advantage for Gap. Uh, so he's definitely winning his lane out there um, along with Heva. So Scumbag Heva, I think, used to be his name. Gap now rotating down just because I think he can deal a little bit better uh, there with the... Um, the Echo. Rotating up to the top half of the map is Mimic. Uh, still a little bit uh, interested in seeing how he lanes. He's down 10 CS, but it is kind of a difficult matchup, so I'm guessing that's what that is uh, attributable to. Uh, both top laners do have their teleports available, so that's definitely a possibility. Be interesting to see whether or not that is uh, something that actually matters. Mid lane continuing to put on that pressure. Man, Zwar is doing really well in that matchup uh, versus Jizuke, although... Um, I'm not exactly sure like how that matchup goes, just regardless of the player. Osoronovacha going in for the dive. Here comes his Terracol. Will make them invincible. So they actually don't take damage from that Echo ult. Gap goes on the dive and picks up the kill. Very, very well played, although he did walk to kind of the wrong side of the turret. Um, comes out ahead, alive, and with a kill. He's now uh, working on getting 50 CS up in the mid lane. No chain to lash, Jizuke will just barely survive holy cow that's close and he is running exhaust on victor not teleport not cleanse something along those lines and he is actually fortunate that he walked so far back before recalling otherwise he definitely would have gotten dove a good plan there by fraternitas but will it work out in the end a minion wave pushing up and fraternitas might just be able to take this mid lane turret Hero class or Taiki trying to clear it out, but that will be the second turret of the game taken by Fraternitas. So already about a 2,000 gold lead uh, has emerged for Team Forge. While they may have a few weaknesses in the mid lane, uh, it looks like that might be compensated for by just coming to the mid lane with the rest of the team. Very easy to fight a 1v1 if you're winning, but very difficult to fight a 1v3 uh, even if you are ahead. So we'll see how well uh, this game progresses as yeah, Gap extremely strong, continuing to push up this mid lane. Denik going in there, a lot of damage onto Jizuke. And look at those boomerang crits just bounce through the entire team forge. Uh, forced to back away for now to maybe forge another plan. Forge their way away towards the Rift Herald. Forge new weapons with which to, uh, I don't know. That's just like so many puns you can make with Team Forge. It's like it's like they're doing my job for me. Excuse me, man. It has been a long day of casting. I think this is the seventh game uh, in a row that I've cast. So hope you guys are. Having a good time watching. Might be a little bit low energy, but we're working on it. Working on getting our energy uh, back up there. So, uh, one step at a time, one game at a time. And that's kind of the way we're taking it so far. A little bit of action up in the top lane as Gap actually goes behind the turret to avoid Astronovac. They take the turret down. That's the third turret of the game completed uh, already for Forge. And Jisuke is actually starting to play a little bit more aggressively in the mid lane now that it's not just him laning against uh, LeBlanc. Oh, sorry, I had to cough there. But now, uh, Zwar is doing a good job clearing out some ward coverage, controlling that dragon area. Even though dragon won't be up for a while, they do have that scuttle crab, so they're in a good spot as far as ward coverage goes on the rest of the map. The target's procs for Balagala! <laughs> or Heva. I could just call him Heva. Uh, but Balagala, 
I don't know why they, they picked these different names or whatever, but uh, yeah, there you go. Um, and yeah, great performance by him in the jungle. He's 0-1 and 2, so not the greatest score, but he's definitely doing his best. On the other side, Yaiki is... Uh, the strongest member on his team he's keeping up there in cs but more importantly he's got that kill and if you look at the gold he's actually just slightly behind and i want to say that is because of the turrets but they actually have the same number of turrets so i guess more valuable jungle creeps and some minion or some uh, lane minions and cs picked up uh, by taiki earlier All right, we're back, uh, and uh, Red Buff taken away there. Oh, Zwar going in for the assassination. Uh, Taiki actually will flash over the wall, heal himself, but he flashes right into God himself. There might be more kills coming in here for Gap, though. Yankee able to get away there, just barely missing that extra damage. No stuns there from Heva. Trying to get forward. Look at that burst. Shizuke goes in, picks up a lot of damage. Now look at that Terra Cult. It's so good on the Cosmic Radiance. And even Denny. Oh, Denny. You may think he's getting away, but I'm not sure if he's going to get away quite so easily. There's a bag of gold he is carrying, and something tells me that Forge want to take it away. Mimic walking around the corner. Denik, oh man, they're playing Ring Around the Rosy. Can they catch the Alistar? Uh, but of course, the good job by the rest of Team Forge to have a decisive shot calling. Push down the mid lane turret, which is going to be a little bit more valuable early on. And wow, Denik actually survived that. Really well played there. He gets that alive, but unfortunately the mid turret does go down. And that is the fourth turret of the game, uh, taken by Team Forge. Yeah, he's just farming up the jungle by himself and the rest of Team Forge regrouping. Rearranging themselves in the mid lane. So this is where they will be as they continue to push things up. I love that shatter sound effect for the Tarek stun. Oh, it's so cool. So good. I love new Tarek. Uh, so, and in the meantime, Zwar is actually just pushing down uh, the bottom lane. So he's going to use that Sigil of Malice, wait for it to cool down, and then double ult the wave. Bounce himself back to home. Some good objective prioritization here by the uh, Korean, Finnish, Italian Team Forge, whatever you want to call it. I guess technically it's an Italian team, but they practice in Romania. They have Korean players and coaching staff, and they have Finnish players. So it's like, you know, they are definitely multicultural, let's put it that way. As they fight against Fraternitas. Fraternitas definitely fighting an uphill battle a little bit, although the gold count pretty even. I mean, it's about 3,000 gold difference, but uh, I think the bigger story is the objectives, and Fraternitas have actually taken uh, the first dragon. They've taken uh, only one less turret, and they've done pretty well in the objective game, so not behind by quite as much as it might look like. Bot lane matchup continues to be a non-factor, and I've really been interested in seeing, you know, how well Ostronovac matches up versus Mimic. But it's a little bit difficult to see that when it's Echo versus Maokai. Uh, Maokai, a champion that generally doesn't have an incredibly high skill ceiling. Um, Echo, a champion that does, but is also so strong and mobile that it's very difficult to judge how he stacks up versus a super tank champion like Maokai. So definitely not an indicative matchup of either one of their skills. Like, if you're having, like, you know, I don't know, what's a, like... Uh, I don't know, Fiora versus Lee Sin or some crazy matchup like that, then you can get an idea of, you know, who's actually super ridiculously good. But it's not quite as easy um, when it's these two champions, so... 
Dragon being started by Fraternitas. This would be their second dragon. And the laser coming through, but it's not good enough for the Steel Yaiki. Grabs the second dragon of the game for Fraternitas. So they're actually doing pretty well. Uh, but now, oh, a nice stun. Does get spell shield. It still lands the stun there on Azwar. They're actually going to turn this one around. Terracult is a little bit too slow, but it still will channel. And the hero class does survive. A teleport in for Mimic is a little bit slow there as well. But a good kindred ult there by Yake. He saves the rest of his team, heals them up actually. But this push coming in should still be effective. Echo is all the way top lane, so Astronovach will not actually be able to, uh, to come in and find any any kills. Sorry for the brief delay, we are back and ready to go. Red buff picked up there by Gap, the Korean AD carry for Team Forge. And while neither team has won a game just yet, uh, it'll be interesting to see which advantages lead uh, to these teams winning or losing games. Bottom lane's War is coming down for Mimic. Mimic is extremely tanky. And he does flash that chain coming back his way. He could have actually like microed backwards and just like barely dodged it, but hey. Better safe than sorry, uses the flash, escapes the gank, and now maybe some extra pressure in the mid lane. As we do have Terra coming in for the flank. Balogala, or uh, Heva, as the case may be. Coming around, marauding the mid lane, but we still have to keep an eye on bottom lane, because this guy, man, Zwar has been really, really good this game. He's got lots and lots of armor, or magic resistance penetrations, so he's got, you know, Void Staff, uh, and oh man, Mimic, the chain does latch. Mimic will be able to resist a lot of this damage, but he is not going to be able to resist it all, and something tells me, yep, he's going down, Zwar on the dive. There's only so much one Mimic can tank. Can the rest of Team Forge turn this one around? Othronovach will ult. He's going to get a little bit of a shield himself there. Slows down onto Jizuke. But the laser coming through will actually find that kill and a double kill for Taiki. Picking up the slack and grabbing himself his first two kills of the game. A good roam down bottom, nice punish there, unfortunately Mimic did die uh, off the 2v1. He probably should have backed up a little bit further, but he might not have exactly known what was coming his way. Gets dove, but in the end it's a 2 for 1 exchange, and a lot more gold coming over to Team Forge, who have now forged their way to a 4,000 gold lead. I'm gonna keep saying that, it gets funnier every time. Bottom lane push continues and intensifies as four members of Team Forge look to push down this turret. Denig has no hesitation going in, and he will. Catches out Heva, but I don't think he's really in too much of a difficult spot. Okay, uh, Jizuke actually stays there and tanks the turret. One more auto attack, and they'll take it down, and it will go down. Uh, Heva's a little bit low, and so is Jizuke, but they will both get out of there safe, sound, and alive. And the rest of Forge disengage. Still waiting to see exactly what is transpiring. Unfortunately, there was no damage being done there. That's just the 
alert from them going back to base and healing. Uh, so uh, a couple of things to, th to think about to talk about as this game continues. Zwar is actually pretty stacked right now. He's uh, making plays across the map. He won his lane matchup. He's been roaming. But since he's been roaming, sure, he's picked up more kills, but he actually hasn't picked up a lot of CS. He's down 30 after being ahead in that CS in the matchup versus Jizuke. And Jizuke has actually come out of that matchup uh, ahead of CS. And oh, man, immediate uh, spell shield and ult on in there. Oh, no. Taiki maybe in a little bit of a rough spot. Here comes the Terracult. Will it be in time? It looks like it will. And all of a sudden, invincibility. It's a pretty good stat to have. Gap picks out God himself. And anytime you say that sentence, you know you're pretty good. And immediately, as if it were planned, a Baron buff being started out. It's a two for zero in that team fight, but it looks like we might be looking for a little bit more as Ostronovac comes in onto Jizuke. Can they kill out that Echo? Echo actually ulting out prematurely. Denik getting into the fight there, but he's actually dropping very low even with his ultimate on. Mimic there to block a lot of damage, and Ostronovac now thinking about going back in. Flash over the wall there. They're going onto Yaiki. They're going to take him out before he can even contest for the Baron. They do need to get back into the Baron pit, though. Jizuke, pretty low gap, though, will jump back in, and the rest of Forge join them themselves together for a party in the Baron Pit. They will pick up a four for zero exchange and a Baron buff. A little bit of a breather there to uh, get a drink and make sure my throat does not totally explode. You're going to be hearing a lot of voice cracking, so just get used to it. Channeling my inner freak, but uh, making a uh, concerted effort to cast as many of these games as possible. I'll be doing the NA qualifier matches coming up a little bit later on today, so just casting as many games as humanly possible, as casterly possible. And I'm mean, really interested in checking out Team Forge, so this is... Um, still pretty uh pretty exciting to get a chance to watch such a powerful such a brand new team and see exactly what they do have to offer uh, you can tell that they're definitely running strategies to win their games not just playing it like solo queue and they definitely do have advantages from very strong players uh, uh jizuke in the mid lane italian mid laner not a lot known about him other than he is one of the best talents in um uh, in Italy, so looking forward to seeing more of him. Uh, we got to see uh, another Italian team, Atrax, play earlier, but apparently they ran a sub who was really, really skilled, uh, Veins, and he wasn't able to play with them their last game where they lost in the qualifier, but... Okay, Mimic already threw his ult on. They're walking through underneath the turret. Here comes the Terracol, gonna take the objective, going in for the fight, and God himself, Immortal! But not for long. He goes down. Denik can't even get his CC combo off. And even though Astronovac kills off Gap in the back line, will he be able to find this kill on to Taiki? Yes, he will. Astronovac actually doing a really good job that fight. He came in and helped uh, assist with the two kills that Fraternitas got. Unfortunately, only two kills when there are five champions means that you lose the fight. And you lose your first inhibitor of the game at 32 minutes. Apologies for a little bit of movement there on the uh, overlay, just making sure everything is good to go. And wow, this game is starting to heat up. Uh, by heat up, I mean be less cool. I guess it's less cool if you're Fraternitas. Starting to maybe feel some pressure, uh, especially in uh, you know the top lane, Ostronovac is finding as many plays to make as he possibly can. But he's not going to be the one to deal all the damage. He can stay alive, he can be annoying, he can put pressure on carries, but you really need the damage to show up. And that's Zwar. Zwar has had a lot of, uh, done a lot of work this game. If you look at the gold count, you can see he uh, is only slightly behind God himself. The reason God himself is so far up there is he has 312 CS, and he's just been a monster in this 
CS department. Speaking of monsters, highest CS actually will go over to Gap. Gap has the most gold in the game. He's 3,000 gold ahead, almost 3,000 gold ahead of his lane opponents. So just uh, a huge performance by Gap. He's already elixired up, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, he does have that elixir of wrath uh, on him, so... Holy cow, this guy is a monster. So you gotta keep an eye on him. He even has a last whisper uh, as well. No stun to land there on a god himself, but the push continues up in the top lane. Whoa, Zwar putting out the pain, catching out Taiki a little bit. But no harm, no foul, and a heal will help out uh, Hero. <laughs> I love Hero. Hero class. Reminds me of, uh, what is it, Superhero High School? Or some like Disney Channel show, I'm not exactly sure, I never watched it myself. Whoa, what was War doing there? Oh, it goes back in! He misses the chain! Spear lands onto a Stronovac, not actually going to be all that impactful. Culling comes out, this is the new 100 range nerfed Culling, so it does not reach quite as far. Nice gravity shield there behind, a nice stun on Edenic. He's going to go in, but look at this perfectly timed Terracol! Heva's ult are so good, and the damage is definitely coming through for Forge. They will find a kill there on Dezwar. Who's actually going to die next? It's actually going to be Jizuke who drops. Heva's pretty low there, but look at Gab just crushing through the back lines. God himself goes down. There's one kill after another. Denik can't run. It's going to be a double kill for both Heva, or both uh, Taiki and Gab. And with summoners leaving the game, you know it's probably pretty over. An ace in the base, and Team Forge will come out on top with a 17-7 score. Congratulations to our players, uh, Team Forge coming out on top. Um, if you guys actually look up a lot of these players, especially from Team Forge, uh, you'll notice that they're not actually very high elo. In fact, a lot of platinum players, but they do hold diamond accounts, diamond challenger masters. Uh, I know most of them have actually been challenger before. Maybe uh, maybe not Jizuke, I'm not sure about that, uh, but the uh, Korean players there were challenger back on their uh, server or at least masters if I'm not mistaken I uh, I think it did say in the official team uh, announcement uh, about the players uh, that they did have a lot of uh, experience uh, they are from a uh, Korean team called CTU Pathos uh, it's Chinam Techno University and the name of their team is Pathos it's a Korean university with a big esports program and it's nice to see uh, a lot of um, a lot of help coming uh, coming their way uh, so uh, a couple of things to talk about um, the um, uh, AD Carry uh, used to be known as uh, Greed a uh, Pride. That's why he's called Gap. It's Greed a uh, Pride. Uh, he was uh, a Draven one trick pony. And then on the other side, Mimic uh, is a former member of KT Rollster. Uh, and instead, he has one of the world's best Lissandras. Uh, but he's not actually playing. Uh, mid lane, so I don't think jungle Lissandra is going to be a thing. Uh, but either way, uh, yeah, preed, ag agreed, a pride is what GAP GAP stands for. Uh, but now he has that 4G on there. But uh, let's see, uh, let's see what uh, the chat has to say. Thank you guys for dropping all these knowledge bombs. I don't know everything about these teams. I did put in some research, but you guys are actually the real. Uh, MVPs for you know knowing these uh, these players these teams. I'm not incredibly well versed in the Italian scene, and I do follow uh, Korean Challenger, uh, but not extensively enough to know a lot about these uh, these players. And I don't speak Korean, so I don't know everything either. But according to you guys in chat, which would totally not troll me or lie to me or anything. Um, they are, in fact, Challenger Master on EU West, uh, but not on EU Nordic East where they're playing. So you might see them be Platinum. They're not actually Platinum. They're playing at, obviously, a much higher level. Um, but yeah, so he was Top 50 Challenger EU West. No idea this season. Mostly plays Control Mages. Okay. Uh, so yeah, for Jizuke. So that's actually pretty impressive uh, to have a member of the Italian League of Legends community achieve that much success internationally on you know uh, the biggest server. Uh, I think it's one of the biggest servers in the world outside of China. I want to say EU West is, but I could be mistaken about those stats. Um, uh, either way, uh, yeah, Jizuke, pretty uh, pretty good. And uh, yeah, I'm actually going to take a quick break before we get into game number two. So stick around and we'll have more games uh, and possibly the last game coming up as Team Forge takes on Fraternitas in the EU Nordic East uh, EU Challenger Series Finals. Thanks for watching. Stick around. We'll be right back with game two.
We'll be right back. 